Good evening, praise God this evening. Thank you for tuning on once again this evening, praise God. I hope you all went out and gave God the glory and the praise today. Hallelujah. Every day, all the time. Praise God. I want to talk to you, um, I'm going to read out of here, out of Acts chapter 10. I'm going to be talking about um, Cornelius' call for Peter. And also, um, it talks about the Gentile here, the good news. And it also talks about um, the Gentile receive the Holy Spirit. First, I'm going to go ahead and read uh, out of Acts chapter 10, verse 1. It says, uh, in chapter 10, verse 1, it says, In Caesar there lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius who was a captain of the of the Italian regiment. He was devoted, God-fearing man. As was everyone in his household, he gave generously to the poor and prayed regularly to God. One afternoon, about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming towards, you know, towards him. Cornelius, the angel said, uh, Cornelius started at him in terror. What is it, sir? He asked. You know, he asked the angel, what is it? And the angel replied, your prayer and gift to the poor have been received by God as an office offering. Now send some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying with Simon, a tannin who lives near the seashore. As soon as the angel was gone, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier, one of his personal attendants, he told them what had happened and sent them off to Joppa. That's also in the book of uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 36. And the next verse talks about Peter visit Cornelius. And verse 9 says the next day as Cornelius messages were nearing the town, Peter went up on the flat roof, you know, to pray. It was about noon and he was hungry, but while a meal was being prepared, he fell into a, a trance. He saw the sky open and something like a large sheep was let down by its four corners, and the sheep and the sheet were all sorts of animals, reptiles and birds, that a voice said to him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat them. And that's also in the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 17. Verse 14 says, No, Lord, Peter declared, I have never eaten anything that our Jewish law have declared impure of unclean. But the voice spoke again. Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. The same vision was repeated three times. Then the sheep was suddenly pulled up to heaven. Peter was very perplexed. What could the vision mean? Just then the man sent by Cornelius found Simon's house standing outside the gates. They asked if a man named Simon Peter was standing there. Meanwhile, as Peter was puzzling over the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Three men have come looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and go with them without hesitation. You know, it said, Don't worry, for I have sent them. So Peter went down and said, I'm the man you are looking for. Why have you come? They said, We are sent by Cornelius, a Roman officer. He is a devout and God-fearing man, well respected by all the Jews. A holy angel then instruct him to summon you to his house so that he can hear your message. So Peter invited the man to stay for the night. The next time, I mean, he said the next day, he said the next day he went with them, accompanied, 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 by some of the brothers from Joppa. And that's also in the book of uh, Acts chapter 11, verse 14. Verse 24 says, They arrived in Caesar, 
Caesar the following day. Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends as Peter entered his home. Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter pulled him up and said, Stand up, I'm a human being just like you. So they talked together and went inside where many others were assembled. Peter told them, you know it is against our law for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile home like this or to associate with you. But God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as imperial, imperial or unclean. So I am without objection as soon as I was sent for. Now tell me why you sent for me. That's also in the book of John, chapter 4, verse 9. He asked, why, you sent, why did you send for me? Cornelius replied, Four days ago I was praying in the house about the same time. Three o'clock in the afternoon, suddenly a man in dazzling clothes was standing in front of me. He told me, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your gift to the poor have been notified. I mean, has been noticed. It has been noticed by God. Now send messengers to Joppa and uh, summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying in the home of Simon, a tannin who lives near the seashore. So I sent for you at once, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here waiting before God to hear the message the Lord has given you. And the next verse talks about the Gentile here. The good news. 34 says. The verse 34 says. Then Peter replied. I see very clearly that God. Showed no favorism. In every nation. He accept those who fear him. And do what is right. This is a message of good news. For the people of Israel. That there is peace. With God. Through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judah's beginning in Galilee. After John began after John began preaching his message of Bethlehem. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who was oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judah and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on the cross. But God raised him to life on the third day. Then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us, whom God has chosen in advance to be his witnesses. We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. And he and he and said he is. He is the one all the prophets testify about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. And the next verse 44 talks about the Gentile receive the Holy Spirit. Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believer who came with who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been pearled, you know, poured out, has been poured out on the Gentiles too. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter asked, Can anyone object to their being baptized now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? So he gave order for them to baptize in the name of the uh, it says the name of Jesus Christ. A war Cornelius asked him to stay with them for several days. Praise God, and that's also the book of Mark chapter sixteen. Verse 7. Praise God. And I also want to share with you talking about a friend. A friend. A friend supposed to be with you to the end. A friend. 
You know, you know, some people be like having conflicts with a friend. And sometimes be for no reason at all. Just having a conflict. Supposed to be uh, your friend having a conflict. But anyway, I'm just gonna read the book of the Bible. It talks about you know something like when you be having a conflict with a friend or something like that. But I'm just gonna read here with Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9 and 7, verse 17 says it says, "He that covered a transgression seeketh love." But he that repeated that matter is separately very friends. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24 says, A man that hath friends must chew himself friendly, and there is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 17 says, Withdraw thou foot from thy neighbor's house, lest he be weary of thee, and so hate thee. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 10 says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But who to him? He said, to woe, to woe, to him, that is alone when he falleth. For he have not another to help him up. It's like you have a, supposed to be your friend. Fall when you fall. And your friend supposed to lift, lift you up. Be there for you. Don't leave you around. Be there for you. You know, if you've been around some so-called friends. And, you know, you in this problem. Somebody want to jump you. And everything is supposed to be you and your friends there. You know, he's supposed to more people probably y'all number than you. And supposed to be your friend. Your friend wound up running and leaving you hanging. You know. And you wanna get beat up and everything and your friend already ran long you know, long ago, seeing a bunch of people coming or whatever, you know, for to bother you or something like that. And he run and left you hanging or something like that. Left you there to get jumped. You know, when that's not even a real friend. A real friend gonna stick with you to the end no matter what it is. He's gonna help you fight. He's gonna help you do something. Praise God. <laughs> but anyway, if this is after chapter four, verse nine through ten. Uh, well, I just read that, you know, some all, you know, the two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift them up. You know, one fall, you know, I was supposed to lift them up. You know, um, Amos chapter 3, verse 3 says, Can two walk together except they be agreed? Matthew chapter 5, verse 22 says, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But who shall, it says, but whosoever shall say, no fools, shall be in danger of hell fire. Wow. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15 through 18 says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trans trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. That is, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear, them tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall lose on this earth shall be loose in heaven. And uh, Matthew chapter 18 verse 21 ver and uh, chapter 20 Matthew chapter 18 verse 21 verse 22 and verse 35 said then cause and I mean then came Peter to him and said Lord how oft how often rather shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seven times seven. So likewise, 
So likewise shall be, so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you from your heart forgive, not every one his brother their trespassers. John chapter 15 verse 12 said, This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 said, Charity suffered long and is kind. Charity edifies not. Charity bondage. Bondage not itself is not puffed up. Galatians chapter Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 says, Bear ye one another burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 1 says, Let brethren love continually. You know, continue, not stop. Don't stop. You know, you keep on loving, continue. Praise God. If God didn't stop loving you when you react to praise, you all on the force or fall short. He didn't stop loving you when you fall short and, and go backwards sometimes. You know, he still love you continue because you know he's going to lift you back up. He will keep you strong. He will make you strong again to get yourself back in order, get back on course, get back on track where you're supposed to be. Praise God. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 7 says, And besides this giving, all diligent add to your faith, virtues, and to virtues, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patient godliness. And to God in his brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Um, John, First John chapter 2, verse 10 to 11 says, He that loveth his brother abide in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goes because that darkness has blind his eyes. You know, you want to see. You don't want to be in no dark. You want to see. Get out that dark. Come out that darkness. Praise God. Because God is a light. He wants you to see. Praise God. He wants you to see all things. He wants you to see everything. Praise God. Hallelujah. He want to see when the one that's pretending to be your brother and sister. He still wants you to see. He wants you to know who's who. Praise God. Hallelujah. And God bless you. I've been hearing... Um, when I heard uh, on TV, the preacher was talking about uh, Fred Casey Price. You know, somebody was sleeping at Fred Casey Price Church. And uh, he said that the, uh, that Fred, you know, remember Fred or Casey Price, uh, that uh, he had told the cameraman to put the camera on the person that was asleep and woke him up, but don't you know they told him, that he said that they escorted him out, you want to sleep in here, he escorted, they told him to leave, leave the church, and oh, I find that, I find that kind of wrong to put somebody on the spot like that, I'm like, you know, because, because you got, you know, rich or money, whatever, you know, God made you rich and, and all these things, you know, it's like, you know, it's not good to try to embarrass somebody, put them all on camera, you let them, you know, let the camera, let the world see that this person sleep or whatever, you know, I mean, I feel that that's wrong right there. It really is. But, you know, me, myself, if I had my own building, house of the Lord, and somebody sleeping, it's not, I'm not going to tell them, hey, bring the camera over here. I don't want to get on this person right here to sleep. I want this person to wake up and get out of here. You want to sleep? You go home and sleep. Why you come to church? You sleep and all this stuff. I wouldn't, you know, try to put somebody on the spot like that. You know, and then, so I guess somebody is trying to do the same thing. Somebody will sleep in their church, whatever. He was making a point with Fred Casey Price did. You know, this church, so yeah, I guess he's seeing somebody sleeping in this, you know, in this church and everything. He's going to, whatever, try to, I say a copycat, which is wrong, whatever, you know. But um, it's, it's just not right to do that. You know, this way to do things, you can do things professionally. You know, you wouldn't want nobody doing you like that. You know, you don't want, you would want God to do you like that. You know, probably put you on the spot and embarrass you and probably put you out for everybody to see what's going on, you know, and, and try to embarrass you. I mean... You know, you have to think, you know, what would you, what would you, what you want God to do you like that? Because I know I wouldn't. You know, just ways to do things, you know. I have somebody to wake them up or something, you know, wake her up, whatever. Maybe I had a long night, you know, tired. I understand that, you know. But at the same time, I do agree. You know, see, the devil wants you to sleep so you, won't, so you don't have to hear the word. The devil wants people to sleep so they won't hear the word of God. You know, but, you know, anytime, you know, a person's common sense, if you really don't be that sleepy, 
you know, you go on to church, or you're going to be really be that sleeper, tired, probably going to work or whatever. So I'm probably party all night. I ain't no telling why I'm going to church. But, you know, you go going to church, you want going to sleep. There's no way you can hear the word of God while you sleep. You know, because how you going to know the word of God and everything you sleep? How you going to know the preacher said that you sleep? But, you know, my thing is, you know, if you're sleeping, you know you're tired, then, you know, working all night and probably partying all night, whatever. You know, stay home. Just stay home. You know, that'd be my best suggestion. Just stay home. You know, sleep, sleep at home. You know, and uh, I mean that's what I would try to just say for professionally. You know, what I try to put some on the spot. You know, just I talk to him a little later on after the service was over. You know, something like that. You know, and hey, young man, and hey, young lady, or whatever. I talk to him after the service. Just say what I just said. You know, that's being professional. That's being nice about that. You know. Not showing no hatred about this, you know, just talking to him and everything, you know, just exactly what I said. I'm gonna be like, hey, trying to, you know, embarrass somebody. Hey, get bring the cameras over here. That stuff was that that stuff was wrong, you know. I know who I wouldn't want God to do me like that. Put me on the spot. Hey, you know, D I C you this way, come on up here, you know, put the cameras on her. I know I wouldn't want God doing me like that, you know. I mean, I just feel that, you know, that would be wrong. It, 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 it's wrong to do, you know. Like, I mean. It's like you can love someone at the same time. At the same time, you know, treat a person the way you want to be treated. You wouldn't want anybody doing you like that. You know, so that would be my suggestion. That's what I would do if it was if it, I had my own building, building, and somebody sleep, you know. i talk to them later if the service over. i you know, catch up with them later. i call them, you know. I'll come, go down and swim, you know. You know, myself, and, you know, and, and politely and say it nice, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody got to hear your business. Everybody got to hear what's going on. Just talk, hey, you know, if I had a rough night uh, last night, probably been for y'all night or working all night or early this morning, got off work, and, you know, you really just sleep, you just sit on. You know, just try to get plenty of rest, you know, before you come in the house of the Lord. You can't hear the word of God, you know, when you sleep. Because that's what the devil wants, because he wants to sleep. He don't want you to hear the word of God anyway. He wants to do them things, you know, knowing that, the devil trying to make you sleepy. He wants you to be sleepy. He wants you to be tired. So make sure you get all the rest that you need before you come in the house of the Lord. You know, sure it's supposed to be in you, true that and everything. But when you want to go to the house of the Lord, you know, you can go on to hear the word of God. Not going to just sleep. You can stay at home and sleep. Praise God. Anyway, I just wanted to share that word. I just seen somebody, you know, just talking about them. I'm not being a copycatter because another preacher's, you know, have his own church and everything. And, you know, telling the cameraman put it on me, I feel that's that's wrong. I mean, I wouldn't do. I'm not trying to be. A, I wouldn't even want to be a copycat and do that thing. Then one church do that, then you see somebody else or hear somebody else seeing that heard that church did it, whatever. You know, they doing it. You know, it's not. I mean, being a copycat, that's not cool neither. You know, do something different. Do something that the way you want to be treated. Cause I'm not. I wouldn't do that to somebody. Put them on the spot like that. You know, I just to me that's just wrong. That's why I say we all not perfect, we all not, you know, we all fall short, we're not perfect, even preachers, you know, the stuff is just wrong to do, you know, put this amount of spot on the camera, you know, like that, but it's wrong to do, but anyway, um, God bless you, and thank you for uh, listening and tuning on to me once again, praise God, and um, I pray for each and every last one of you, people I go, praise God, I mean, had a blessed day, awesome day. Even though I have to work, but hallelujah, church is in me. Praise God. They pray it up, keep my joy, keep a smile on my face, and hallelujah. Praise God. Anyway, I'm praying for each and every last one. I hope y'all have went on out to the house of the Lord and gave God all the praise and the glory and the thanks. And not just today, I mean every day, because God is awesome. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Yes, He is. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Heavenly Father, I pray for those watching. God bless you and God keep you. Pray the Lord be with you and keep you and lead you and guide you and protect you in every area of your life. I pray the Lord just keep you strong. Do what's good. Do what treat people the way you want to be treated in Jesus' name with respect. I just pray you just have the joy and just to keep the joy, uh, keep the faith and within Christ Jesus. Love one another. Love your brothers and sisters in Christ. Love them anyhow, no matter what they say, no matter what they do, no matter what about they hate and whatever it is. Just love them anyhow. I didn't say you have to deal with them and said to be around with them. Just love them anyhow. I pray for them. Still do good in spite of what they say. In Jesus' name I pray. And I rebuke every sickness and every disease. Somebody may not, couldn't make it to the house of the Lord. Somebody probably what, couldn't, you know, just couldn't move right now. The pray, Lord, just release that pain. Release them bones. Move them bones in Jesus' name the way they're supposed to be working in order in Jesus' name. 
Glory be to God. God bless you. God keep him. By his strike, you are here. You were healed. In Jesus' name, if you believe, glory be to God. God bless you and God keep you. Remember, God love you and so do I. Always keep your joy. Don't let the devil in hell steal your joy today or no day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Glory be to God. Like all of us say, God love you. He cares for you. If you want to do your do, don't worry about the don't. You know, I mean, he didn't say it was going to be easy. You know, he didn't say it was going to come easy. He didn't say he was going to have trials or tribulation. I mean, they'll come, but you know, it's up to you to stay on your P's and Q's and do your do's. Hallelujah. And don't let the devil, that's what the devil job is, to try to come in and corrupt you. But you got to stay strong be better than that. You got to beat them. You got to beat the devil at all times and be ready. Just be ready. I mean, be prepared and be ready in what to say in a good way. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God bless you and God keep you. Until next time, you take care. Have a wonderful rest of the evening. In Jesus' name, and I hope you have a blessed upcoming week this week. You know, let the devil still enjoy no week this week. To I mean, just, just stay focused on the word. You know, stay strong. In Christ Jesus, glory be to God, because he loves you, cares for you. Be blessed in all that you do. Amen. Take care until next time. If God say the same, see you later.